Collaboration is not a word that we use on a daily basis, so what do I mean by that? Collaboration is when two or more forces, usually people, create something. And I say usually people because I think collaboration's everywhere. It's absolutely ever. If you go down to the smallest something, you'll probably find two of something just kind of getting along. <laughs> if you look throughout history, you find collaboration has changed everything in entertainment. You know, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers, like, dance, totally changed. You have Martin and Lewis changing comedy completely. You have Lewis and Clark changing the way we perceive the known world. And then you, my favorite collaboration, Lois and Clark, was just changed. Yeah. <laughs> collaboration basically says we're fine alone, but we're so much better together. <laughs> there is a documentary that came out a few years ago um, called Objectify. It's an incredible documentary about design. And when I was listening to it, I was just picking up on this idea of collaboration. And I saw all these design firms that had collaboration, and their idea was that you don't realize that the chairs that you're sitting in were designed. The clothes that you're wearing were designed. We are surrounded by design. And I would take that and say, we're absolutely surrounded by collaboration. You woke up to this morning, hopefully, and, <laughs> and you got out of a bed that was designed. You went to the bathroom, you put a toothbrush in your mouth, and that was designed. There was probably over 200 people that had a say on the design, the packaging. There are the business owners and the employers and the creatives and the pencil pushers and everybody to just to get a toothbrush in your hand. If you look around, the world is full of collaboration and a lot of that's through design. When I moved to Birmingham about six years ago, I hardly knew anyone and I was really sad. <laughs> but then I started meeting people, and after a couple years, I realized that a lot of the people that I met were musicians, and a lot of them were really awesome musicians. <laughs> and I was having lunch with one of my really awesome musician friends, and we were talking about how there's an incredible resource of music in Birmingham. I'd just come back from a trip to New York where I saw an exhibit on this thing called Yado which is a creative house that's been around since 1900. And it's still going. And the people that have attended this are people like Truman Capote and Aaron Copeland. You kind of know these people. Through this collaboration of Yado, they've produced 64 Pulitzer Prizes, uh, only one Nobel Prize. They have to you know, work on that a little bit. But I said in this lunch, I was like, you know, we should do that. We should do that on a smaller level, but we should do that. <laughs> And so we, were, we talked about it a little bit more, and we ran out of the restaurant. It was a bar. And we ran out of the restaurant, and we went to a venue, and we said, this is our idea. And they said, this is great. This is, this is something that's in California right now called Hotel Cafe. It sounds a lot like it. We're like, yeah, but we want to use all local people, and we want them to kind of collaborate. He said, I love that. So he said, how about this date in September? We said, great, we got a show. We walked out, we looked at each other and said, we don't even have anyone to play yet. <laughs> so we started calling people on the phone. We were saying, hey, we're going to meet over at Caleb's house. Uh, we're going to have an idea to tell you about. It's not a timeshare in Odessa, Texas. We're going to tell you about, it's a music idea. And of course, all the musicians said, oh, I don't know if I can make it. We said there was going to be pizza. And they said, oh, <laughs> I can make it. So about a week later, 20 musicians show up to my house with instruments. And they all came to my house because of this idea, collaboration. They didn't even know why they were there. And so we sat around and we told them this idea. And the idea was called Grey Haven. And they said, well, what is this about? And we said, we want you guys to do what you do naturally. But we want to push you to collaborate with people kind of outside of who you usually collaborate with. They said, Grey Haven, that's interesting. Why do you call it that? I said, well, because we want you to take unfinished ideas. This is something I'll talk about later, but we want you to take unfinished ideas, and we want you to have a safe place to bring them, the gray area, the place that, I don't know, you can, you can come to Grey Haven, you can perform this and kind of work it out with other people. I said, cool. I said, but we're going to spell it with an E, we're going to make it one word because that's really hot right now. <laughs> so... We all sat in the living room, and uh, this is what it sounded like. We have audio. Yes. 
like a perpetual orchestra, just kind of, none of us knew what was going on really. And it kind of sounded horrible, <laughs> but it kind of sounded fantastic at the same time. And what I was hearing was just potential. And there was tons of talent, but there was so much potential. And so we decided we needed to give it structure. And we decided we were going to have 10 songwriters that are at each show. They're going to play two songs each. They have to collaborate with people they don't usually collaborate with. In other words, there can be no bands. This isn't going to be a showcase for bands. So we signed up 10 people. They played two songs. People came. And it worked. It was amazing that it actually worked. And so we said, we should do this again. And so two months later, we did it again. And we did it again. And more people started coming, and we started realizing this was actually a good strategy because we had 10 musicians, and they probably had 10 friends each that wanted to come to these shows. And then they, those musicians had to collaborate with at least one other person, so that was 10 more people. And then those friends wanted to see the collaborators, so it was just a lot of people started coming to these events. We started packing out places. We actually moved to smaller places so it looked bigger, um, but it was pretty great. Like it, it was amazing. In three years, we've had 170 different collaborations. We've had over 250 musicians play and over 2,000 people come to these small local events that happen. We realized that things that you wouldn't think of that would go together actually can go together, which was a great lesson that I learned from collaboration, was that your initial thought towards things can sometimes be wrong. Um, I'm going to show a really interesting example. Uh, I play ukulele, uh, which was represented today proudly, and uh, I teamed up with a 8-bit Nintendo DJ, and this is what it sounded like. Because why not? <laughs> um, and that's what we started realizing, uh, that we started just creating things because why not? We could do it. We could do this. We just had a steel drummer play. Who, who plays the steel drums? <laughs> like, it was fantastic. And he played in this acoustical set with a full band. We're like, why not? Steel drums. And we realized that we are creating opportunities for people, which is a huge facet of collaboration, is that it creates opportunities that usually weren't there. Out of those over 250 musicians that I mentioned earlier, there was a spectrum of the professional musician that tours the country to the guy who's by himself in his bedroom with a guitar, he's an accountant, and <laughs> no one really hears his music. But we were combining the two. We were saying, what can you guys create together? And it was amazing. And they were able to get out these songs and these ideas, even if it was just two of them. And it was amazing. Um, we started realizing that one of the things collaboration does, as well as create opportunities, is that you can say, without us, this doesn't happen. Or without us, this doesn't happen this way. When you have collaboration, you have infinite potential. One person is very unique, but in another one, and it's Amazing, you multiply that potential and you multiply all the different factors that can go into it. Um, one of the things that collaboration does that I absolutely love is it gets rid of the secret sauce. Um, there's this old school business idea and as I'm a photographer by day, superhero by night, photographer by day, and I love collaboration and it kind of levels the playing field. Um, you go into iTunes and you can type in U2, or you can type in a local musician, it shows up the exact same way. That was an amazing collaboration for musicians, was digital music and Apple coming in. Um, collaboration helps people think differently, think about themselves differently, think about other people differently. It actually gets rid of key words that are in your vocabulary. It gets rid of words like mine, and it actually gets rid of words like yours. And this is what I'm talking about with the gray of Grey Haven, is the idea of the finished. Art is never finished. It's something that, if something's on display and the artist says it's done, you'll go up to it and you'll take away something that maybe they never intended for you to take away. We see that now a lot with music and remixing. Um, there's this artist called Danger Mouse 
that decided he was going to remix the white album of the Beatles and the black album of Jay-Z. Neither of those people ever expected that to happen, but he created something that was literally a phenomenon. Like, people loved this record. They never intended this. Collaboration extends art and extends opportunities, and it gives people a way to thank the artist. It says, I hear what you're saying, and I'd like to join with you in this. This is how you affect my world. Collaboration is inc incredibly important to me. I think everything that I've done for the past six years have been involved with collaboration. It's taught me that if you stretch outside of yourself and you form unexpected collaborations, you actually have the potential to create something unique and beautiful. And it's almost only through that. You'll always be collaborating with people. So when I decided that I wanted to do this at TED, and when I was placed in this, my hope was that we would become a city of collaboration, that you'd look around, and TED is a phenomenal way for you to experience this. Look around at the people here and realize that this is unique. They're here now, and you're here now. Without you, nothing will happen in this city. And it's true, without these collaborations, we'll just be kind of a cookie cutter city, but we're unique in ourselves and unique in our collaborations. I would love for us to be a city that when we meet someone else, we think, what can we make together? And I think that you'll find that the answer is anything. Thank you, Ted, and thank you, Birmingham. <laughs>